So when it comes down to it, there's a few things you're going to want, guys. First of all, you want to make sure you know the name of your business. I'm telling you right now, one of the hardest things people run into is freaking finding a name. So make sure you have the name of your business. The next thing you're going to want to have, guys, is going to be the amount of people in your business. Right? Once you have that, guys, you need to have your business address. After that, guys, you're going to need your NAICS code. I'm telling you right now, guys, when it comes down to the ATM business, this is probably like one of the most confusing aspects of the business. I get this question all the time, guys. So the NAICS code for the ATM business, pay attention. You, you right there, pay attention. Is 5223. Right, all right, all right, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another weekly live. It is the first weekly live of 2024. So, first of all, congratulations for making it this far, guys. Now, if you are watching this on YouTube, because we do pre record this for our YouTube channel, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. So, I got a question for you guys. All right. Who's ready to take advantage of the new year? Right. And when I say take advantage, I mean, it's not a New Year's resolution. You know, you're going to hit it strong. I want you to comment new, comment new below. If you're going to hold yourself accountable and you are going to make this your best year yet, guys. Right. I'm big on saying this. We don't look into the past. We don't say in 2023, we did this. It doesn't matter. We're focused only on the future. Now, guys. Right. So I see a few comments in here. OK. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of new comments that I'm talking about, guys. I see the motivation. Right. Also, special announcements. I got a few. So, first of all, got premium locations in Canada. Canada has been absolutely phenomenal. It is, I'm telling you guys right now, when it comes down to the ATM business in Canada, it is the big blue ocean. And the reason I bring this up is because there's nothing like Cash App, Zelly, Venmo, and all that. That's not, that doesn't exist in Canada. It's crazy over there. I'm talking about, there could be like two people that go to a business a day, and all of a sudden that location's making like two or $300 a month. Right. So if you're from Canada, we have premium locations available. Make sure you comment Canada below. All right. We don't discriminate whether you're in Toronto or you're in Edmonton. It doesn't matter. Canada is absolutely phenomenal. Guys, right. And with that being said, guys, right, we have a special announcement at the end of this live. I have a special guest coming on for our second lesson. But after our last training, I have a special announcement for you guys. So make sure you stay tuned. Right. So. Before we actually get into the lessons for today, let me break down a little bit about us, right? So ATM together, guys, January 2021, so literally three years is when we started, technically November of 2020, so just over three years. Since then, guys, we've been able to help over 2,000 people. We've installed over 3,000 ATMs, and I'm talking about Canada to the U.S., and we've installed over 300 BTMs nationwide, and that's not even including the UTMs. We haven't even installed one guys. But between all of that, we've helped generate over $1.2 million in passive income. That is income from those machines, guys, not from us, right? Now, you're probably wondering, well, who the heck is this get them guy, right? So a little bit about myself, right? I get this question all the time. So I'm currently COO of ATM3.com, actually co-founder of another company, MerchantAutomation.com. Now, with that being said, I always wasn't always in this position, guys. I always like to look into the backstory just so you guys can understand like some perspective. So before this, man, I was, I joined the Marine Corps when I turned 18, right? I wanted to serve my country. After that, somehow, some way, you know, life happens, ended up, you know, estranged from the family, homeless for a bit, over $50,000 of credit card. And the reason I bring this up, guys, is because if I can get back from that, which is really nothing crazy, and I can get to this position, that should tell you that you absolutely can do it. I'm all about comparing myself to others. It is what it is. You have to look at the camera and be like, you know what? If this guy can do it, I can do it too, guys, right? So with that being said, let me break down exactly what we're going to be going over today, guys, right? So for January 2nd, 2023, first thing I'm going to cover is going to be step-by-step -step your LLC, how to form it for either your ATM business or your BTM business. We're covering everything today, okay? After that, I have a special guest coming on. I'm not even going to give a backstory on him, but he's absolutely phenomenal, ATM deployer. He's going to be covering how you can scale your ATM business while working a nine to five, because we understand that is very common, guys. Okay. And then I'm actually going to break down how to get your ATM business launched within three weeks. So if you're doing the math, guys, that means you would be up and running in February, guys. All right. So with that being said, before I even get into this lesson, guys, I, I, I have to ask this question. 
you guys are excited. I'm not, I'm just not seeing the energy here. And I, I can, I'm on my third energy drink for the day, guys, and it's 8 p.m. So that should tell you something. It's a 24-7 operation over here. But I want you to comment startup. I want you to comment startup. If you're excited to get your business started, guys, and I'm not talking whether it's an ETM business, UTM, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's Turo or even a car dealership. If you're excited just to start your business, guys, because at the end of the day, you have to take a step back once in a while and congratulate yourself. You got to say, you know what? I took the first step, at least for getting information to start a business. Whether you do it or not, regardless, it does not matter. The fact that you are here Getting the information to get success for your business tells you that you're already going to surpass the competition, right? They don't even exist anymore, guys, right? So let me break down exactly, guys, step-by-step, step, how are you going to get your LLC for your ATM and BTM business, guys, right? And by the way, so if any of you guys have not gotten our beginner strategy, guys, we have two, two different ones, guys, okay? So number one, we have an ATM for a traditional cash ATM, and then we have a Bitcoin ATM one. So if you want a copy of our ATM PDF guide, comment ATM. If you want a copy of our BTM guide, comment BTM, all right? ATM for ATM, BTM for BTM. We're going to keep it simple, all right? And then if you do comment, make sure you check your messages either after the live, maybe even during the live, you can listen to the background. But one of our team members will send you a copy. They're about like 10 to 12 pages long. It's a PDF on how to start each business. That way you can just follow along for the training guys, right? So now, I a quick story for you guys, right? I got a quick story for you. So some of you guys have heard this, but I bring this up for a reason, all right? So back in uh, law enforcement for a little bit, right? Nine to five, working a lot, working a lot, hourly wage. Literally, I was chasing that. Was, we call it blood money, but I was chasing that hourly overtime rate, right? And I started a lot of businesses. And I'm talking about like all the things you saw on like online. This is like almost like nine or 10 years ago, right? So everything you saw online, like you know, they had like the yellow books that would be like how to do this for dummies and all that. I tried everything, right? The one thing I didn't realize was the importance of an LLC. And here's why I bring this up. I went to a call. I'll leave it like this. I'm just going to keep it a very short, short story. So I went to a call, right? I took a report for somebody else. That's it. Ended up getting sued. Yes, sued. They're like, you didn't write the report right. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. And if you guys know, it's just normal. Like the, the joke is like how many times you get sued just because it is the way it is. And when you work for a big city, what happens is they settle. So there's money. They don't care if you're right or not. It says, hey, it's going to cost more to go to court. So they're going to give out the like 20K here, 10K here, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's just what it is. It's business. So that being said, I remember specifically in court. Oh, this is my first time. I don't care. I'm like shivering and stuff. Right. <laughs> and then, Attorneys, like, they're like, hey, you got to list out your assets. So I'm writing everything down. I was like, I got a Snickers bar. I got an energy drink. I have, like, $50 in my pocket. <laughs> they're like, bro, it's like, too much information. And then I listed my business. I was like, hey, you know, is that, like, in your name or is it an actual business? I'm like, well, no, it's an actual business. I'm like, oh, don't worry about that as long as it's owned separately. And I was like, what? I'm like, yeah, it comes down to being separate entity. We're talking about what you own. And lo and behold, they settled. It was, it was totally frivolous. But at the end of the day, there was a lesson there. The biggest thing when it comes down to business, at the end of the day, is liability. As you get bigger and bigger and bigger, what you realize is it's all about liability. Ultimately, you're doing the right thing, but you can't control if you serve somebody a latte and the milk is a little hot. People sue. I mean, think about McDonald's. They got sued for the coffee being too hot. Somebody could trip on your sidewalk. And say, oh, you should have mowed your grass. I'm going to sue. That looks like a nice car in your driveway. Why does it say something about ATM services? I'm going to find out about that. So pay attention to this lesson, guys. All right. Now, when it comes down to forming your LLC for your business, it's extremely simple, right? And I'm going to get this lesson very quick because I, I see our guest just joined and I want to make sure I get him enough time. So when it comes down to your ATM business or your BTM business, they're very similar, but you want to form an LLC. And the main reason why we say LLC versus like a C Corp, S Corp, whatever. The main reason why is simplicity. You can always change to something later. And at the end of the day, when it comes down to business, simplicity scales, complexity fails. Charlie Munger from Berkshire Hathaway, one of the biggest investment firms in the world. He was famous for saying this, simplicity. If it sounds more complex, he's like, nope, too hard for me. And he's, this is, you're talking about somebody that owns basically 50% of Apple, all right? So we take these principles at the high level 
and bringing it down just when you started your business, guys, right? So when it comes down to it, form your LLC. There's a few things you want to get when you're forming this, guys, right? And I know some of you guys probably haven't gotten a guide. So if you haven't gotten our step-by-step -step guide for the LLC, so that way you can just pay attention to the lesson, make sure you comment LLC below. One of our team members will reach out. It's a quick one-page guide that literally goes step-by-step -step everything I'm going to tell you to form your LLC, guys. Make sure you comment below. Okay? So when it comes down to it, there's a few things you're going to want, guys. First of all, this, this sounds like counter, counterintuitive, but you want to make sure you know the name of your business. How many of you guys got some kids, right? And I don't comment, right? Because your kids might see the comments later. But how did you figure out the names for your kids? I know some of you guys, man, you guys are just reading some books. You're like this. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to name them that, right? Don't comment because they might see the comments, guys, right? But when it comes down to it, when you're forming your business, I'm telling you right now, one of the hardest things people run into is freaking finding a name. I'm telling you, they're like, yeah, I don't know what to name it. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, just name it. So you're like, I can't. This is a big deal. I'm like, you know what? You're right. So when it comes down to it, guys, keep it simple. You can always change your name later. Remember, one of the biggest companies in the world is named Google. What the heck does Google even mean, guys? Think about that. It's a multi-billion dollar company, so it's not a big deal. So make sure you have the name of your business. The next thing you're going to want to have, guys, is going to be the amount of people in your business, all right? So how do you guys have co-investors in your business? Comment me below. Comment me. Maybe you have co-investors, maybe a significant other, maybe a sibling, whatever it is. Maybe you're not doing this venture on your own. That's okay. That's actually, I'm very proud of you for doing that because now there's two of you guys or more building something together. So the reason I bring this up is because when you're forming your business, you want to make sure you have all the information of the people involved in the business also. Okay. Once you have that, guys, you need to have your business address. Okay. And I know it seems this counter, I mean, it might seem like simple, but these are some of the most common questions I run into when it comes down to forming your business, right? So you want to make sure that you actually have the address. So there's a few different options, guys. All right. I'm, you, Excuse me, the top three, right? Comment top three, guys, because this is the three things you can use for your business address. Now, number one is going to be your home address, right? I'm going to go into the, all these in a second. Your home address, a virtual business address, or a commercial address. Those are the three places you can actually form your business, guys, right? And I know some of you guys are wondering, like, well, what about PO boxes and all that? No, you can't. You cannot do that, right? So I'm going to go step by step at each one very quickly, guys, right? Now, when it comes down to your actual home address, the reason why I typically recommend that now is because of simplicity, guys. I like to stay lean when I'm starting a business, minimize the expenses. That way, you're just focusing on the things, the meat and potatoes of your business to make the most money. Okay. So, what does that mean? It means, well, form it your home address and you can receive all your information at that address. The second option is going to be a virtual business address. All that is, guys, all that is, is literally. Imagine your home address and you fictitiously split it up into a thousand different addresses. So one, two, three, Main Street, Suite One, Suite 9000, Suite 9001. That's it. It's a virtual address that you can form a business at. And typically they receive the mail for you. So the reason why a lot of people do that is simply because it's actually more private when it comes down to the business. So when it's listed on state websites, your home address isn't listed. So if you don't want it listed, that's an option for you. But typically you're going to charge a monthly fee. And it's usually about like 15 to like $50 a month. You're going to pay different companies to actually do that. Okay. The third one is actually going to be a commercial address. Literally like just like around. We have an office in Miami. It's an actual physical office with all these different suites. You're going to pay the most for that. Okay. Typically you don't really need that. And the reason I bring this up is because ultimately like for us, we have a podcast studio. We have conference rooms. We have rooms for clients to actually meet us and actually do training. It's a little different. But when you're starting an ATM business or a BTM business, when you really think about it, it's just yourself and the machine. So you just need somebody to receive the machine. So you don't want to pay five, six, seven thousand dollars a month or more on a space when you can just start lean, guys, right? So the one I recommend of those top three guys is going to be your home address. After that, guys, you're going to need your NAICS code. I'm telling you right now, guys, when it comes down to the ATM business, this is probably like, one of the most confusing aspects of the business. I get this question all the time, guys. I had an attorney one time, like, get up, man. What law school you go to? I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, the way you're talking, I know you went to a law school to know that. I'm like, no, I just Googled it. So the NAICS code for the ATM business, pay attention. You, you right there, pay attention. 
is 522-320, right? It is 522-320. I'm telling you, pay attention, pay attention, right? And I want you to comment that below. And the reason I bring this up is because this question gets asked all the time. People are like, what does that even mean? I'm like, hey, at the end of the day, this is what you want to remember. The reason that's in existence, it's just a classification code. So basically, when you go to the bank, when you go to file for your EIN, when you file for anything, like when it comes down to banking or anything like paperwork related, they always ask for EIN or your business because they need it classified. So make sure you comment that below so you don't forget, because I know most of you guys are probably on your phone. Some of you guys are probably driving right now and you're like, how do I get this? I don't want you to crash, right? 522-320, guys, all right? Now, with that being said, when you're actually forming your business, there's one thing I always try to, re I repeat this to a lot of people, but use a third-party filing service, all right? So third-party filing service, you're probably like, what are you, what are you talking about? Well, when it comes down to the business, you can always file yourself. You can do the snail mail version. Literally, get the state paperwork, get it from the website, mail it in, wait for it to go out and all that. But how many guys like things to be done now? Like you're like, get them now. I want you to comment speed below. Comment speed, right? And this is like uh, if you've seen cars, if you have kids or nieces or nephews, right? Speedy, uh, was it Speedy McGrone or something? So here's the reason why I bring this. Success favors speed, guys. At the end of the day, think of it like this. Everyone knows um, like the Bitcoin price. If you're getting into Bitcoin ATMs, you know the Bitcoin price. It's like 45000 now. Back in December of last year, not, not last year, but the year before that, it was like 16000 I was like, guys, Bitcoin is going to go crazy by the end of the year. Speed, quick, get into this, right? The reason I bring this up is because the worst thing that can happen is regret. There's a saying, guys, rejection is better than regret. And the reason I bring this up is because at the end of the day, imagine, I know all of you guys have had this situation. When you knew about something, you saw, maybe you saw a news article, maybe your friend said something in passing, something, and you're like, and then you see it pop off. And you're just like this. I knew about that. You forgot to take action. There's that one portion that you need to do. So at the end of the day, the people that take action quicker are the ones that profit the most. So the reason I bring this up is because imagine you know the location for your ATM or VTM and you, some secret, maybe some friend of yours is like, hey, you know, my buddy owns this dispensary is opening up and they need an ATM and you wait to form your LLC and everything goes slower along the way. Guess what's going to happen? Someone else who's probably watching this live is going to be like, you know what? I'm going to take advantage of that right now. And you're going to see that machine installed and like, dude, what? I knew about that. So don't be that person. So when it comes down to it, I usually recommend filing with a third-party filing service. Something like Inkfile. I think there's a Zenfile. There's a few different companies. But use an online company because they're faster. They usually file faster. You can just pay for expedited filing, guys. Right? So that's all I got, guys, for the LLC lesson. Now, if you want some more info like that in the future, I can go into like federal taxes. I can go, I can go in the weeds with you guys. I love this stuff. I want you to comment info below common info. Because instead of, you know, like the motivation mindset, that's always cool. But I know a lot of you guys like more of the technical information to start your business because it is kind of hard to find. I'm not going to lie. I spent hours and hours and hours and weeks trying to find this information. Comment info below just for future reference for our lessons. That way I know and Paul knows exactly what you guys are looking for in 2024. So we can get you the information faster, guys. All right. So uh, with that being said, we got to get into our next lesson. I got to see if I see uh, Patrick in here. He's hiding. I see him. Okay. He's close. All right. Uh, we have a special guest. Special guest. This is going to be going over scaling your ATM business with a nine to five guys, right? So let me uh, introduce Patrick in here right now.